Since time immemorial, the Nuchanal, Coast Salish, and Kokwakwak people have stewarded the land today known as Vancouver Island. Situated off the Pacific coast of Canada, it is the largest island on the western side of the Americas. Vancouver Island is home to breathtaking beaches and pristine forest getaways. The wildlife is diverse and there are more than 50 unique indigenous communities to visit and celebrate. My name is Chad Asleo and I'm from the Humalco First Nation and I'm grateful to call this island my home. I would like to welcome you to episode one of Indigenous Voices of Vancouver Island, a five-part podcast series experiencing Vancouver Island through the stories of Indigenous tourism. How should you take in the island? Where should you go? What should you see? What should you do? Where should you eat? And what should you know about the modern and ancient histories and cultures of this beautiful place? By the end of the journey, together, I hope to provide you with some answers and inspiration for your next visit here. This podcast is made possible by 4VI, formerly known as Tourism Vancouver Island, as well as the many Indigenous tourism businesses that we are going to meet over the next five episodes. This first episode is called Journey with Our Ancestors, as we profile three Indigenous guided cultural tours and excursions. We're going to get up close and personal with some grizzly bears, go on the kayaking trip of a lifetime, and hopefully come away with a deep appreciation of these magnificent lands and waters. Let's dive in. We begin our journey about a four hour drive northwest of Victoria traditional Coast Salish territory of the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. We drive down a narrow and winding road with towering cedars shooting up to the sky on either side of us. It's here we find the ancient rainforest of the Pacific Rim on the west coast of Vancouver Island, the edge of North America. The home to the New Channel people, where the word New Channel means all along the mountains and sea. Strategically nestled between the rugged outer coast and the protected inner waters of Barclay Sound lies the structural remains of Kihin, the ancient capital of the Hawaiian First Nations, one of 14 new channeled nations. If you need help finding this area on Google Maps, you can search for the small town of Banfield, British Columbia, which is within the Hawaiian territory. Inhabited by the Hawaiian ancestors for more than 5,000 years, Kihin is the only known remaining traditional First Nations village on the west coast of southern BC that still features significant standing traditional architecture. Arriving at the trailhead to Kihin, we're just a brisk 30 minute walk to the village site. It is here we meet our new friend Wishki, who shares with us much of his knowledge about the culture and history of the Hwayat. We call the tours a journey with the ancestors, and it truly is a journey through time. You get to walk through the, the ancient rainforest. You get to see the indigenous connection to the forest and the cedar in particular, as well as, you know, landing on one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. And when you get to the actual historic site, you get a chance to see, you know, um, ancient remnants of traditional longhouses that date back 5,500 years. So it is quite the experience. Wishki is a cultural tour guide with Kihin Tours. His passion is sharing his Hawaii culture with visitors in the hopes that we come away with a deeper connection to the sacred trees that tower above us in every direction. Well, I think it's most rewarding because this is, this is my home, this is my village, and this is where my culture, my language, and everything kind of stems out from this because this is considered like, a ancient, um, like our ancient capital. Eh? So it's one of our, our main villages and to me, it just means such a, you know, such a lot to, you know, to have a chance to share my language and culture and share the experience with uh, guests from all over the world. That's really special. Can you tell me, I know you touched on it a little bit. You talked about cedar and a couple other stops. Can you uh, talk about other cultural elements that are interwoven within the business? What other things can people experience when it comes to your guys' culture along the tour? Uh, well, on the tour... On a tour itself, uh, I like to incorporate language. I like to. I bring my drum with me every day, 
you know so I sing songs and I like to make that kind of like weave that into the whole experience because it's, it's something that, that is my uh, that's my strength and it's my passion is, is in the music and I think it's something that's very you know translatable you know that if you hear you know a good song or a good beat you know it's easy to you know to get into it which despite if you can understand you know the words or lyrics or not Following the old growth forest trail of boardwalk sections and stairs, we arrive at a beautiful protected beach with rocky ledges and tide pools. Wishkey hopes that by now his visitors have an appreciation for the vibrant culture that's been in place on these lands for thousands of years and continues to thrive today. One of the things that I really hope that they feel is that deep connection and that connection and also that, uh, you know, that they can feel like they've done, you know, maybe like their small part in, in reconciliation, and, you know, because it's just a big part of where we're at in, in Canada and North America in general. You know, there's a lot of, of uh, reconciliation that needs to happen between, you know, with the indigenous peoples of the land, you know, so I wear my orange shirt. I do so every day, you know, because that's a big thing in Canada where we honor the residential school survivors. So I do things along, you know, on my tours along that line, you know, where I educate about that. But also I offer up uh, songs and messages, you know, for healing and what's the best way that we can move forward, you know. So I hope that they really do feel connected. The journey to the Kehan village is a chance to connect to the earth in new ways that may just leave you transformed. The Hawaii are gracious hosts, and along with other New Channel peoples along the Pacific Rim, invite visitors to follow and join the conversation by using the hashtag Indigenous Coast BC. For more information on when and how to book a tour, visit kihin.ca. I raise my hands in gratitude to Wish Key for sharing his wisdom with us. We now travel from the southwest corner of Vancouver Island to the northwest corner for the kayaking trip of a lifetime. Cayucat Sound is one of the five major sounds indenting the west coast of Vancouver Island. Starting from the Comox Valley, we drive a bumpy five hours down a remote logging road. We arrive at Fair Harbor, the end of the road, and take a water taxi over to the village of Cayucat. Looking behind us, we see the steep Vancouver Island mountain range peaking over 1,500 meters. This is the traditional territory of the Cayucat and Chekleset First Nation, or KCFN for short, the most northern of the 14 New Channel communities. Once ashore, we are greeted by Gary Wilson, CEO of the KCFN Group of Businesses. Uh, My traditional name is Anis Lagilis, and it's a name that that was bestowed upon me uh, during a potlatch in my community in Heltzik uh, community of Bella Bella in the Central Coast, provided to me by my late and great uncle, uh, Percy, uh, who... uh, uh, gave me that name uh, that comes from uh, another part of our territory called Kimsquit, which is where uh, that my the lineage on my on that side of my family comes from, which is on the northeast of shared territory with the New Hawk Nation. While Gary is indigenous, he recognizes he too is a guest on Cayucat Chekleset lands. He took his job here to help KCFN grow a sustainable economy. About 200 Cayucat Chekleset citizens live in the village. There are about 500 members in total. The nation's leaders and elders have directed Gary and his team to do business based on Cayucat Chekleset values. Uh, Mamukstaf means uh, working together in the Chatlet uh, language. And the, their, their vision is flourishing, healthy and resilient nations leading a sustainable economy in the Cayucat Sound region and beyond. So there's a lot packed in there, but what's important is it's a flourishing, healthy, and resilient nations leading a sustainable economy. From the village of Cayucat, we take another boat about three and a half kilometers to Spring Island. This is the home of West Coast Expeditions, a Cayucat checklist-owned guided sea kayaking company. 
West Coast Expeditions offers one-day trips up to week-long excursions along rugged shorelines, protected waters for paddling, and playful marine life. There's no uh, greater way to be intimate with the territory than being in a kayak on their waters, in their territory, whether it's a four-day or a six-day excursion to be guided throughout the territory and connecting with not only the water, but the, you know, the place names, um, having an understanding of the Cayuga Chexas uh, nations and their long history of, you know, in excess of 10,000 years being in that part of the world. And, and so, you know, through West Coast Expeditions, people who come to the territory, uh, you know, experience uh, and look looking through the lens of the, you know, the Cayuca Chexas peoples uh, and sharing their territory and telling their stories and connecting with the place to really be able to tell their stories and, and have the people experience that and leave with an appreciation for why it is that they want to protect the place, uh, you know, to make sure that uh, when the guests come in there, they, they, there's a small footprint that they leave, but, you know, there's an imprint on their minds and their hearts when they leave as well to remember the experience there. And it, it's incredible. Like, and there's, like I say, there's no better way to be connected with place than being in a kayak. You know, you know, it's obviously uh, close on the water. You're, you know, with other guests, you're with guides, you're with those that are from the territory. So that, that, that particular experience speaks to the hospitality, uh, you know, get, getting intimately involved to the, with the ocean and the land and then connecting with the species that also they share the territory with, whether they're whales or eagles or bears or, you know, sea otters. Um, yeah, so guests really are, are, are blown away by that experience. And then having not only that, but the experienced guides who really understand how to traverse that uh, territory. Very rugged out there. Uh, the waters are beautiful, but again, uh, you have to be a pretty experienced uh, kayaker to be able to traverse some of that territory. Guests retire each night in glamping luxury. A coastal paradise with food, drink, heated cabins, grassy meadows, whirlpools, and star-filled night skies. Sitting around a fire, we learn about the Cayuca Checklisted Territory. How it stretches from Pork Creek, just north of Nooka Sound, to Salander Island at the tip of Brooks Peninsula. How their stewardship responsibilities rise up to the highest point of land and cast seaward to the point where you can no longer see the land while standing in a canoe. For Gary, living and working in Cayuca Checklisted Territory has embedded one new channel toward in his mind and heart forever. ESOC, which means respect, uh, respect for all things, ESOC, yeah. And, and it's respect for all things, respect for people, respect for place, respect for one another, uh, and respect for those, uh, those finned ones, those winged ones, uh, the land, the territory, the trees, everything. So it encompass, it's all encompassing, but, but it's essentially, you know, the, the, you know, when people think about respect, it's it's uh, usually, uh, you know, uh, a relationship to another individual. But in this case, it's all encompassing. And it's one of those things that I, I really take seriously when when it comes to me as a guest, as 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 a representative of the KCFN group of businesses, when, when I'm out in, the, you know, doing business development or meeting with partners or meeting with uh, the hereditary chiefs or, or even citizens in the community, you know, uh, that that is a foundational piece for us as a group of businesses to have respect uh, uh, for the nation and for those who are in the territory uh, in a big way. So, that, that's a you know very important uh, value that I, I take very seriously. For more information on booking your kayak trip of a lifetime, visit westcoastexpeditions.com. Every indigenous nation has unique culture and history, but there are similarities, especially among the nations who share Vancouver Island. A very deep respect for the land and waters is universal among New Channel, Coast Salish, and Kwakwaka'wakw Kwa peoples as well as for many of the non-Indigenous residents who call BC's southern coast their home too. Now let's hear from a non-Indigenous resident who works at an Indigenous-owned resort as we zip 
back across the island, then traverse the Salish Sea. Gathering on the lodge veranda of the Clahous Wilderness Resort, one deep breath of pure forest air brings stillness to a busy mind. It is a journey to get here, our longest journey yet. This off-the-grid eco-resort offers unreal access to nearby grizzly bear habitats. Chris Tate is the tourism manager here. He starts by explaining just where in the world we are. The Clahous Wilderness Resort is located in Desolation Sound on the BC coast. Now, Desolation Sound is is in the northern end of the Salish Sea. The Salish Sea is this giant inland ocean that spans all the way from near Seattle all the way up to where we're located, including Vancouver, Victoria, Vancouver Island. And it's a calm ocean full of humpback whales and orca and lots of wildlife viewing. But we're tucked up in a little remote section of Desolation Sound. We travel from the Clahous Wilderness Resort about an hour by boat, passing the spectacular Toba Inlet waterfalls, looking for sea life before arriving at our dock in Toba Inlet, known to the Clahous as Yekwaman. From here, we take a short bus ride to our viewing platforms tucked away in the lush, temperate rainforest of the Toba Valley along the glacier blue waters of a remote wilderness river. Our trained Clahous guides spent about three hours getting us as close to the grizzlies as possible. We look down from safe viewing platforms that respect the bear's natural habitat. Our guides tell us to listen closely that we might be able to hear their heavy breaths mingle with the rushing water. It is an exhilarating and truly amazing experience. Grizzly bear tours are followed by a cultural activity back at the resort. Chris says this is a great time for guests to really connect with local Clahous knowledge holders, which further help integrate the awe-inspiring moments we've shared on the land. I mean, cedar weaving is a really nice one because the guides and the cultural interpreters will be sitting with guests with pieces of cedar and just quietly sitting and maybe making a cedar rose or a headband, or maybe they're actually doing wood carving with cedar. But working with the cedar is just a really nice, quiet way to reflect on um, what cedar means to the Coast Salish people and the Clahous First Nation people of this area and why it's important for their culture so they can tell stories about what the uses of the cedar were, what the spiritual meanings of the cedar are, but actually using their hands and doing something with the guests. Most importantly, it's just a connection between those people and the, and the guests to enjoy themselves and have that connection. And when those guests go home to their, you know, wherever they live in the world, I think they might have a little bit of different appreciation for the, the First Nation cultures and, and some of that culture. So it, it's just a way of a connection Cedar weaving is just one example of the things we do. Storytelling, drumming, songs around the campfire or other activities. Um, and you can do that, but you could also just sit back and have a glass of wine on the deck and watch the sunset. So so it's very flexible and, and organic with what guests can do and, and uh, very small and exclusive. We're only taking about 12 guests on average, so we're, there's not a lot of people there. So it allows for that connection, but it also allows just for the, the space to have a, a vacation in the wilderness and watch the marine life go by us and the sunset uh, each evening right off our deck. As each day passes, we fall into the rhythm of the coast with Clahous staff guiding our journey, allowing us to slow down, smell the cedar, taste the ocean, and be inspired by the natural beauty of the Clahous land and culture. We are ready to embrace the natural and the supernatural spirits of this land and its people. And now it's time for us to say our goodbyes. I have comments from people when they leave the resort and all of our staff are doing the final welcome song. And they're, uh, you know, not the welcome song, but just they do an eagle song and and different traditional songs. When the guests are leaving, they're going to have sometimes tears in their eyes because they really had that connection in their they're, uh, you know, a little bit emotional about departing the resort. So, yeah, I think, again, it comes down to something really authentic and indigenous. And it's hard to talk about it sometimes. It's really intangible and it's different for everyone. But 
the Clahoos people are welcoming. Um, they have been involved in, in tourism for thousands of years with the, the canoe journeys and people traveling up and down the coast. It's kind of a it's kind of what tourism is today. But now we're welcoming people from other cultures into that into that space and and having um yeah and a, just a really amazing authentic experience at the resort. Plus, get to see grizzly bears and and whales and and uh, just see the BC coast in a really comfortable and easy way. Once again, I raise my hands in gratitude to Wishki from the Quiet First Nation and Kihin Tours. To Gary Wilson of the Hailsick Nation, CEO of the Klyuka Checklist Group of Businesses, and to Chris Tate, Tourism Manager at Klahoos Wilderness Resort. This has been a journey with our ancestors, episode one of Indigenous Voices of Vancouver Island, a five-part podcast series visiting Vancouver Island through the lens of Indigenous tourism. We've heard so much here already, and yet there remains so much more to experience. That is the magic of this place. In the following episodes, we'll feature Indigenous food companies, meet more Indigenous ecotourism operators, dive deeper into the culture and the magnificent natural wonder of Vancouver Island. The podcast series is made possible by the social enterprise 4VI, formerly known as Tourism Vancouver Island, and the many Indigenous tourism companies we have met and will meet in the episodes to come. My name is Chad Asleo, and I thank you for joining me on this journey. <laughs>